A lot of people view Hank Pym of the Avengers, Ant-Man, Giant-Man, under really one attribute, beating his wife. Is that fair? How do we get there? How, when, how did that become the defining moment of his character? Well, I, yeah, pretty, pretty easy answer, question to answer, so let's get into that. Hey everybody, this is Perch. In 1981, um, they were basically running a storyline where Janet Van Dyne, the Wasp, was super awesome. Like her, and it was it was kind of comic book awesome. It was over the course of, you know, people think that this was built up over years. They're used to today's uh, method of decompressed storytelling. But uh, back in the 80s, you know, decompressed storytelling meant like three issues. You know, we, we, we drug this plot line out for like a whole quarter of a year. I mean, we, we went from Halloween to Christmas before we paid that thing off. Um, and she was suddenly very successful. Her, her fashion designing was going very well. She was being seen as, uh, she had a couple moments where she had, uh, you know, they, she was always a strong member of the Avengers. She was the one who named the Avengers. Um, but she had some success in defeating some, some bad guys and everything seemed to be going right for Janet and not right for Hank Pym, for, for Ant-Man. And he was progressively getting pissed off, and some of it was been you know was was assisted by some pretty uh, hacky storytelling where uh, Hank Pym was seen as secondary to Tony Stark. Tony Stark was the real genius, and Hank Pym was like the guy who's messed around with ants. And you know, it's like, hey, look, I can make uh, armor, and I'm a wealthy billionaire playboy, and got flying cars, and look at all the stuff I'm going into space, and you can talk to ants. That's cool. You could shrink. Well, good for you. And that was kind of the, the storyline they were going at the time. Tony Stark was being kind of extra douchey. Um, Wasp was kind of flirting with him a little bit to some extent. But but in the way, she flirted. Not like You didn't really get the feeling like Wasp was going to actually sleep with other people. You just got the feeling like you know that was her personality. So Hank Pym's getting more and more ticked off. And uh, finally, in a moment of rage, he, he uh, backhands her. Now, here is the weird part, because the initial intention of Marvel was that he was just going to kind of throw his arms up in frustration and accidentally smack Janet. And it would be a source of kind of, uh, not redemption exactly, but that, that it would show this frustration has gone too far. He would struggle who he was as a hero, not acting heroic, but it would lead to kind of both a reconciliation between the two of them and also a, um, a redemption arc, if you will, for Hank. For, for Hank. Um, unfortunately, the way it was drawn looks a lot more like he is just wailing on her. It does not look like, um, you know, he's throwing his hands up. He is like full on backhanding her. And it doesn't help that they drew her in like a little nighty. And, um, she's saying, I can't let you, ah, and he's like, shut up. And he's backhanding her. I've got to do this. I've got to save the day right before their eyes. This is a chance to redeem myself. And so it's a really... Um, uh, I've, I've, it, the, the scene, it was drawn way more hostily than Marvel intended it to, or at least so they claim. Now, I tend to think that's true, though, because the reaction to this was definitely uh, super negative, both on Hank Pym, like, this guy's an ass, and also, you Marvel are terrible for doing this to one of the heroes, why are you doing this? It, it, in this one panel, it basically made him irredeemable. Now, the storyline of a hero being pushed too far and like lashing out in frustration and everything else is not new. It was done before and will be done pretty much constantly since. This this was not a a you know, this was a redeemable, pretty tried and true plot line. But this way this one panel was drawn, it kind of changed it. And then kind of going forward, writers started to kind of lean into it a little bit more. They would try at various times. It's where you could really tell that Marvel was, you know kind of disconnected on what was going on uh, back when Hank joined the West Coast Avengers and and was there during kind of trying to redeem himself. And then Hank would go through over three decades, pretty much constant, like he'd try and build himself back up again. And then no, it would never really go anywhere. It's not like it fizzled out or he like, he went back to wife beating. Um, he would just, the storyline would just kind of end. Like he started, um, I forget the, the woman's name, a fire or something or other in West Coast Avengers. He's had a kind of a relationship with this woman and um, it kind of showed him moving on and, you know, hey, maybe he's got something else happening and everything else. And then he just kind of dropped it. And then he would kind of go back to Janet for a while. 
and then he wouldn't. And and Bendis used to make fun of it by you know saying you know is Hank and is Hank and, and Janet still a thing or not? And it's like I can never figure it out with those two. Uh, this was one of the sequences in Mighty Avengers number one uh, when they pulled Janet onto the team. And it was kind of a way of kind of acknowledging that Marvel was really all over the place with Hank. Are we planning to redeem him? Are we going to lean into this? A little bit like how uh, the Tony Stark demon in a bottle bit established Tony as having alcoholism problems. And then a lot of writers just couldn't help themselves but want to go back and back, especially in recent times, just want to go back and back and back over that ground over and over and over again. Um, that was kind of the, the downside to... Tony Stark. Uh, Hank Pym was like that, only worse. It's like you couldn't have a comic anymore without, it's like, yeah, but this guy beats his wife. You, you just, that, that was all he was from that moment on. And, and so it, it wrecked the character to a large extent. I think, um, you know, Tom Brevoort uh, made a number of comments about how, you know, he wasn't, uh, it, 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 basically that, that this wasn't their intention and and um, no matter, and then finally kind of acknowledge, no matter how heroic or evil he is, this is be the most interesting part of his character, which was curious wording. I've always, I've always felt that was pretty, I don't know, douchey? Maybe that's the right word. They basically, it's like, yeah, the most interesting part of this character is how he made him, you know, a, a you know, a wife beater. I, it's just that doesn't, I, I don't know. It just it, it sounds wrong on on every different front, but but whatever. Um, it does speak to why I think a lot of people have had issues with Marvel comics and that they do portray themselves as dealing with more complex issues, dealing with maybe more uh, in depth plots that you don't get in other comics that you don't typically see more down to earth kind of storylines like alcoholism, like spousal abuse and, and so on. Um, but then they do so in a really one dimensional way at times, which kind of defeats in my mind, at least defeats all purpose. I think that's one of the sources of when you have those, if people like Marvel or DC better, this is one of those things that people always argue about. It's like, well, Marvel comics are more realistic and the counter argument. Well, but are they really, because they're taking realistic tones and they're, they're, you know, distilling it down to a very, very simplistic view. I, I don't know. At any rate, um, it is curious. I mean, there's been other scenes, especially in the 80s, uh, where, uh, you know, heroes would, you know, smack or slap or backhand their, their spouses. I mean, Reed Richards, um, you know, smacked Sue pretty good. Uh, <laughs> and nobody really remembers that. That's one of those. It comes up every now and then. During Civil War, I remember... Um, uh, I, it wasn't Bendis. Somebody was talking about, it wasn't Millar. Uh, somebody was talking about, I was like, well, you know, Reed Richards beats his wife too. It's like, well, not really. I mean, the panel we're talking about is uh, Reed, uh, Malice, I think. Sue was possessed uh, by an evil, you know, Malice character at the time. And Reed was like trying to antagonize her to kind of snap out of it. Or, or it, it was it was an interesting it did. I do remember reading that a kid going like, "Holy crap! Reed Reed's become hardcore here. This is you know, it it did come across pretty pretty crazy." Um, that whole Psycho Man storyline uh, for the Fantastic Four. If you read it back, uh, the John Byrne Psycho Man storyline, it's it's grim in parts. That whole both the malice and that storyline was like. You know, people think uh, Hickman's run on Fantastic Four was kind of dark. It's like, eh, I don't know. I mean, you you, you emotionally belittle She-Hulk into a, a baby and a kind of complete mess, and and Sue Storm is devolved. I mean, there, there's some, you know, Reed Richards turns into this kind of evil, crazy step. It, it's nuts. Anyway, we were talking about Hank Pym. Um, this is the legacy of Hank Pym. For better or worse, this is what uh, he has become, and at this point, I don't think that character really ever changes. I mean, Avengers AI, uh, which I'm reviewing, uh, that is, uh, you know, you've got kind of happy-go-lucky Hank Pym, but even there, you're reading it, and you're like, ah, this guy used to, this guy beat his wife that one time. That's, that's unfortunately, that's what people remember. So, how about you? Is Hank Pym redeemable? Can it, can it be so? Um, is it, do you find it kind of fun that, uh, well, not fun, but funny, that, you know, kind of this one panel was drawn not completely uh, to spec, but as but it did go to print, and as a result, it defined the character. Isn't that kind of crazy if you think about it? Um, but let me know your thoughts. Uh, like, subscribe, uh, follow me on Twitter or Facebook at Comic Perch, and thanks for listening.